good morning good evening uh good afternoon depending on where you are at and who is listening to me um i just hit the record button and i'm going to talk about whatever comes to my mind because i'm reaching out to you with absolutely no agenda so yesterday i was on facebook this keeps coming back to my mind i have to talk about it i was i was on facebook and i saw one of my friends who travel who travels a lot who is an employee travels a lot and when they're, when they're not traveling then they are drinking a lot partying a lot and eating food a lot right like going out and eating food a lot and if you scan through social media this is the kind of content that really works you know that really excites people um and people go for it right people love to see other people traveling people love to see what other people are eating people love to see what um other people are drinking and how they're living their lives basically so we as human beings we've grown to be nosy people we like the big boss stuff now the big boss is happening on social media so it excites us but as a producer of content we need to think about what are we producing and what message are we giving and is it really related to our niche or do we even have a niche right if a food blogger posts like food videos food videos if a travel blogger posts like travel videos it makes sense you know and if if a travel blogger who has consistently been posting travel blogs if they come and start giving us gyan about how to start a startup we might not listen to them right so a food blogger blogs about food a travel blogger blogs about travel destinations they are visiting uh, the cost of travel the ways of travel the hotel costs and what are the different home stays they are staying at you know it's very niche specific content that they are giving so as a viewer we might be entertained but um, but if you think about it whoever the travelers are they are going to take action and they are going to call those home stays they are going to call those restaurants they are going to visit those restaurants they are going to eat at those restaurants so it's kind of 80% marketing you know that is happening in that travel blog while the travel blogger enjoys the experience right while the travel blogger um, you know enjoys time with spending time with his family going Uh, driving their car for thousands and thousands of kilometers, you know, so he or she is enjoying the process and sharing it with you. And as a byproduct, you end up signing up for some home stays. You end up going to on the same routes. You end up eating the same foods. Same as with the food blogger. The food blogger could go restaurant to restaurant to restaurant and eat foods and share those experiences with you. And they are foodie people. You know, they like quit their jobs and become food bloggers. They're so foodie people. They love food. uh they enjoy food they enjoy sharing their experience with people and that's their niche you know but when i see my friend you know like sometimes traveling sometimes food blogging sometimes alcohol blogging you know mm, of course it's a discovery process on what your niche is and i'm not saying anything about it you know it's a discovery process of what are you really passionate about you know in life but coming back to employment and when you do those things while being employed um uh, you know it costs money you know everything costs money the travel costs money the food costs money uh you know going to places flying to places costs money so even though the husband and wife work at the same time they have their liabilities to pay so then one wonders where does the money come from right so then there are employee credit cards uh employees are given credit cards and uh, made to take credit cards by banks because uh, they have the spending capability they have the paycheck coming in and that paycheck is going to pay for those credit card debts so the credit card debts piles up and then the paycheck pays for it and then the credit card debt piles up and then the paycheck pays for it and then the credit card piles up and then the check pays for it 
Uh, apart from that, there are liabilities such as home, car, and other things for which you have to pay for on a monthly basis. Even people are buying like refrigerators and washing machines on EMIs these days. So you got to pay for those things also. So there are a lot of, so, so the thing is that you make one, $1 and you spend $3 because somebody else is giving you the money to spend and live a good lifestyle. Now, the tough question is this, that what if you have all these liabilities to pay? Economy is bad. You are on the verge of losing your job and you have a lifestyle to maintain or you had a past lifestyle that you still have to pay in, in the form of your credit card debt. Who's gonna pay for it? And if you're responsible to pay for it and if you're on the verge of losing your job, you don't wanna lose your job. You're so desperate to hold on to that job because that job is actually paying for your lifestyle. Because of that job, you got those loans, those credit cards, and that's why your, your lifestyle is being sustained. Now, if you're on the verge of losing your job and you have to save your job and you are asked to do something to save your job, and this thought just came to my mind yesterday, right? If you have a lifestyle to sustain, if you have things to pay for, if you're on the verge of losing your job, but you have to save your job, till what extent would you go to save your job? You know, because the economy sucks. If you go out there looking for another job, you might not get it, you know that. So somebody asks you to do something as a favor for saving that job. That favor could be weird, weird stuff, right? I mean, weird stuff exists in this world. There are many people we know going through weird stuff. It's just that today we have not faced the weird stuff, but what if tomorrow, you know, you have liabilities, you have EMIs, loans to pay, and you are expected to do something that is unethical. You are expected to do something that you don't gel with, you know? Yes, you would go to the extent of, you know, drinking, going out and drinking with somebody, but what if somebody won? ask you for a sexual favor to keep your job, okay? Two, what if somebody asks you to get them something illegal, like drugs, weapon, pistol, okay? Three, um, yeah, if somebody, if, like, if somebody asks you for a sexual favor or if somebody asks you to do something any unethical, all three basic stuff, you know, like doing their job for them or, you know, working twice as hard, you know, but that's easier. Here are the boundaries, the personal value system boundaries that you didn't think you would ever need to cross, but you have to cross or you consider crossing your personal boundaries, your value boundaries, because you don't want to lose that job right? It happens to a lot of people, especially high up. Then what would your state of mind be? And this is all hypothetical. It just came to my mind yesterday that if somebody's presented with such a situation, what would your mindset be? You know, like if you have to give somebody a sexual favor, you know, it could be like opposite sex or same sex, who knows? And if you have to do something illegal, which could land you in jail if caught, you know, like, like transporting some illegal goods, drugs, alcohol, I don't know, um, pistol, guns, or cash. You know, the world is a, is a pretty dirty place out there. How far would you go to save that job? because that job pays for your liabilities, that job pays for your lifestyle. Where would your value system tell you to stop? Don't do it. It's okay. You know, and at that time, what would you think? What should you have done along the way that you came here to not land up in such a situation? or to not have to compromise your integrity, 
to not have to compromise your values, to not have to compromise your physical self. You know, many people we don't even know about cross those boundaries of sanskar of value systems just to keep things going for their family. We don't even know about it. It happens. And that's the question for you. What could you have done to not get into a spot like this where you get compromised? And what would you have done otherwise? You know, it's just about liabilities. It's just about lifestyle, right? What could you have done that didn't make you so vulnerable in the first place? If you love to live a good lifestyle, why don't we focus on making the $3 instead of depending on the bank to give us $3 to live that lifestyle? Why don't we invest time and energy and educate ourselves to, instead of making $1, make $3, pay it all for cash so that you are not dependent on anybody. Your life is not dependent on a job your life circumstance, your, your physical boundaries, your integrity is not up for sale, right? And that's worst come worst circumstance. It's not a normal circumstance. I'm not saying it happens everywhere, every day. But what if you are presented with such a situation? Would you have not rather build a parallel stream of income for yourself that paid for your lifestyle, that kept you happy and that kept you feeling that, hey, even if I don't have this job, at least I have this income coming in. So I don't really have to do things that don't fit in my personal boundaries, that are outside my personal boundaries, that are outside my value integrity boundaries. And I don't have to do them. I don't have to go for it. Or, you know, normal circumstance, stay stuck in a horrible job that you hate to do, but you do it anyways, because you have bills to pay. So I don't know, I talked about it because I want you to think about it. And you might not be in a situation right now, but it's worth giving it a thought. Let me know. Thank you.